The 1996 minivans are hitting your showroom, and the new body style presents new challenges. My name is Frank Webb. I'm the best-in-class ceiling group leader at the St. Louis South Plant. I'm here today to discuss one of those challenging situations, and that is body ceiling. It's important to know that what you see isn't necessarily what you've got. In other words, you may have evidence of a leak in one area, but find that the source is in another. Here are a few tips to help you troubleshoot these problems. I'm going to go to the rear of the car. We're looking for water intrusion in the form of water droplets on the top of the garnish, the access hole in the D-pillar, access hole here at the D-pillar middle garnish, and dampness of carpet at the base of either garnish. What we're going to talk about firstly will be the weather strip on the quarter glass. We have three problems here. One may be the seating of the weather strip itself onto the flange. Gently removing this will we'll check for proper amount of mastic as when the weather strip sealed that we will seal off any gaps of the 3T metal that we have underneath here. And again, the distortion of the metal preventing a proper fit, which can be straightened by a dolly, dolly block and hammer. Another source of entry will be in the liftgate trough area. We'll go to the grommets. We would check and make certain that the grommets are sealed properly. We have two on either side. We have a sealer seam, a pumpable seam. It comes across the bottom of the trough area, up the waterfall area. What we're looking for is skip pinholes in the sealer. We would go to a seam that's on either side of the liftgate trough, outboard side of the hinges, running four and a half. This is sealed with a thumb grade sealer. What we're looking for again is pinholes or the sealer not being smoothed down flush to the metal allowing water intrusion to get between these layers of metal which would show up by removing the garnish here in a form of water droplets which also comes down inside the D-pillar makes exit here. Another source would be a weld burn hole in this area. You'll see the spot wells as you lean over and look in the bottom of the trough. Well burn hole would allow, again, access in, into the passenger compartment. Now let's go to the hinge. You have two bolts attaching the hinge with a dowel pin in the center. All three are critical. If you're sourcing a leak, you put the water hose on top of the hinge, you find your leak. When you remove these hinges and the car goes back together, both hinge bolt holes must be sealed along with sealant around the dowel, around the dowel, because behind that, we again have a three-tier metal, which allows entry. What we're talking here on the hinges, if you have water entry on a left hinge, it may or may not show up on the left side. It may also show up on the right, vice versa. Right may show up on the left, may show up on both. The seams can show up on either side, the four and a half seams. Now let's talk about the wrap joint, roof to aperture. This is a seam that runs the entire length of the car, fore and aft, covered by a molding. We can go underneath the molding, raising it gently, not to disturb the adhesive material under. But what we're doing is looking again for a pinhole or well burn hole. Another source would be the attachment of the luggage rack at the rear of the roof. We're looking for two things. We're looking for the attaching screws to be stripped or loose. And we're, when we remove those, we would lift this up, look underneath, make sure that the rev nut attach, attachments that are in the roof are seated properly. Number one, they're not spinning. Number two, that the perimeter of the attachment is, is sealed properly. It has a sealed gasket. If that's disturbed, you again get water intrusion showing up at the D-pillar, any one of the access holes and or the carpet. That's all for the rear. Now let's step to the side. Let's look at the sliding door area, B-pillar and upper track. What we're looking for would be dampness of the carpet along the scuff plate area, the base of the B-pillar, 
or water droplets coming between the garnish, coming down the B-pillar garnish itself. Most likely source would be the flange area, upper track flange area. These are two pieces of metal that are mated together that are covered by a thumb grade sealer. What we'd be looking for would be any skips in the sealer along the flange at the top, pulled away at the bottom, pulled away at the rear, not made it flush to the surface in the rear, allowing water, of course, to enter through the back. We would look at the seam along the bottom surface, only in the front. We would look for pinhole sealer again, any skips that would be in the sealer along this seam which goes under the door at the B pillar. We'd come to the top, removing the secondary, which will expose a seam that runs across the top of the upper track. Again, coming under the molding, we're looking for skips and or pinholes. Removing the weather strip, we would be looking for water that would trail down the carrier and make entry between these pieces of metal and could actually come down and make entry inside the B pillar, entering at this point. Again, the fitness of the fitting up of the weather strip, the amount of sealant that you have inside the weather strip is critical. We would look at the gasket portion around the snubber plate. We would go back the upper track. We have a vertical seam that runs, that's exposed here and runs under the upper track, looking again for pinholes in the sealer or skips. We would look at the back of the track as a last resort. There's five attaching studs, we would remove the weather strip, pull the headliner down. The rear four attaching points would be loosened. At that point, we can pivot off the front, slide the door out and upper track down, out and have access to the rear vertical seam. That would be the last resort. Another cause for this can be the skips that we talked about earlier and burn holes underneath the molding itself. The top portion attaching point of the luggage rack, the screws and the rev nuts that go into the metal can be either the front or center, which would track to the B pillar. Let's move to the C pillar, which possibly could show up dampness on the carpet, droplets at the garnish in the center droplets at the garnish, the bottom of the quarter garnish. This can be root cause to the quarter glass weather strip, which we talked about earlier, dropping directly into the quarter panel. It can also be caused by the upper track rear vertical seam that we talked about earlier. And the C pillar pocket. This is the mating up of the aperture to the C pillar. The periphery, you'd access that by removing the bolster and the quarter garnish and sealing the, the periphery of the pocket. The quarter glass, the sliding door glass on the sliding door. Should you detect water on the interior of the garnish, whether it be at the handle or in the center, you would go to the quarter glass itself. What we have is six attachments, studs on the sliding door. We would pop off the top garnish. We have screws in the handle area, two at the top, one at the bottom, which need to be removed. We would check the periphery of the glass to the metal flanges. What has to be done here if you can put a water hose around the glass, detect the point of entry, you can caulk the metal chasing the butyl strip 
caulk the metal to the to the butyl as the last resort. If that fails, we have to remove the glass, clean the sealant, reseal with a butyl tape sealant, replace the glass, torque on the studs at 30 inch pounds. Now let's move to the front of the vehicle. Let's talk about the front end of the vehicle. Dampness along the carpet at the scuff plate or water droplets on top of the scuff plate or weather strip. We would go to the removal of the door trim panel, which snaps out attached by Christmas tree clips. What we're looking for underneath the panel will be a rubber water shield. We're going to make sure that the water shield is smooth to the surface of the door. No wrinkles, which would act like a funnel. This weather strip must be secured to the panel without wrinkles, otherwise it can leak onto the weather strip, pitching it inboard either on top of or under the scuff plate itself. Water droplets beneath the gas pedal brake pedal area. Water droplets coming down the A-pillar garnish, which would make entry at the bottom of the A-pillar. Water droplets along the bottom of the A-pillar. What we would do, unsnap the A-pillar garnish, gently pull the headliner, and we would look underneath to the layers of metal. So we would look for water intrusion between the metal. If you have water intrusion between the metal, you would go to the top side of the car. Again, the wrap joint we talked about earlier, we talked about how to gently lift the molding up sourcing any pinholes, well burn holes. We talked about earlier the verification of the attaching point on the luggage rack and it would be the first or second attaching point would allow entry between the metal. Anything that we see, if we can't detect it between the metal, but however we have entry along the A pillar on the sheet metal itself, we would then go with a hose and verify our windshield area mating surface all the way over. Left side should show you left side anywhere from center all the way around the periphery of the windshield to the left side. Same thing on the right side. Looking at the center portion of the windshield above the rear view, what we might detect would be water intrusion at the overhead console coming around the seam. What we have is a the formation of the headliner acts as a reservoir. If we would have water intrusion between the windshield and the flange, it would show up in this area. What we would be looking for would be in this area a leak that would have the windshield not compressed or improperly placed urethane. If we had a power mirror, another source would be the cable, cable which would have interference and have punctured the urethane bead. What we would do is patch the urethane bead either from the top side or if accessible, you drop the headliner and get to it between the flange and windshield. If you have any other questions, 